Answers of an Alien from Andromeda Galaxy This matter is copyright to Atlantico Br. Captain Bill Channel, broadcast on YouTube site. This is the written version of the Mitha videos. Redistribution or commercial printing will be treated as misappropriation of rights. Publication is not allowed without the prior assignment of rights. This series of videos is a summary of encounters with an alien coming from a planet in the Andromeda Galaxy. These meetings are a courtesy of www.mythi.com.br, the real owner of the information input to the videos, aired by the YouTube channel Atlantic Ober. The first meeting happened one night by chance, at least apparently, at one night on the coast, in a place frequented by fishermen. The conversation started normally, without at first realizing who he was. During the conversation, it became clear he was a person from outside the planet Earth. The first questions and answers in the series were very general. After a few meetings, the questions started to have more specific connotations. Video 01 September 10, 2010 The planet Earth is undergoing a transformation in the near future? Yes, Earth is on the threshold of a change of era. All planets with the possibility of colonization have defined their eras of development and cyclical changes. What is the origin of humans from Earth, and when did it really initiate? The terrain humanoid is a composite of various races of humanoids that were transferred from other planets that changed era in ancient times, allowing development on Earth that was in the beginning of an era ripe for colonization by humanoids. The Earth has had many cycles of humanoid experiences, since the Cretaceous period, around 65 million years ago. There are many threads in the doctrinal folklore that mentions these humanoids as exiled from Capella, descendants of Anunnakis, etc. In fact, all the different ethnic groups found today on Earth came from different places of the universe to live and thrive in this era that is ending now. Living on planet Earth with the sole purpose of integration in a larger community. Like the Earth, there are hundreds of millions of planets serving as a cradles of humanoid civilizations. Can the Earth human being be transferred to some other planet? Yes, each planet has a specific radiation in their state of development, ages, called by some as Aura To make it easier to understand this radiation field allows humanoids tuned to the same frequency to be attracted to embody on these planets in the ethnic groups closest to their vibration. The historians are fascinated by the Maya, Aztecs, Incas, Egyptians, Sumerians, Vedas, and other civilizations that have expressed an incredible knowledge of engineering, astronomy, and mathematics as can be answered by that principle. Humanoid races that, because of their frequency, no longer resonated with the planet Earth were transferred to a planet, whose resonance attracted them to reincarnate in other ethnic groups more developed at that time. The descendants of those races that were left on Earth are actually crossbreeds between the original race and natives, so those groups were not in the right frequency for transfer at that time. What happened to the animals that became extinct on the planet at this age? During the various eras of the Earth, many types of animals were taken by their respective frequencies to be reborn in other environments. The most recent example is how dinosaurs were not wiped out by widespread cataclysm as they are purported to be by scientists. There were millions of giant reptiles on the planet until approximate 32,000 years ago and some becoming extinct as recent as a few centuries ago. The vast majority was literally taken away by Galactic Pastures 
much like how shepherds exchange their flocks grazing here on planet Earth. Explaining, the irrational animals are collective ethnic groups, and each does not have its own identity as an individual. They need to be supervised and transferred from place to place consistent with the vibrational reality of their ethnicities. The dinosaurs are still alive and active on other planets that are more conducive to their survival. Why have the archaeologists found so few fossil specimens if there were millions of them walking around here? Should we not find dinosaur bones everywhere with ease? This owes to the fact that those few found in the excavations had died of natural causes before the mass transfer that happened in the last passage cycle on Earth. And were buried here as evidence that they were populating the world in previous eras. Also in relation to animals, some are gone, but others start to adopt the planet as conducive to their ethnicity, and there will be many new breeds of animals on Earth. Routinely you have news of new species appearing for the first time in scientific circles. Who takes account of such transfers and colonization processes? There are many alien communities thousands of years far ahead of Earth in technology and development. Could you imagine how your technology will be 1000 years from now? These galactic communities are aimed at harmonization. You have heard that for a home to be tidied, everything has to be in place. If you put a stove in the sleeping room and a bed in the kitchen, there will be a mess that generates general discomfort. In a nebula, galaxy, or planet, it works the same way. The animals that are not smart must to be transferred and managed by intelligent entities. Folk figures like elves and gnomes, known as agents of nature, have a kernel of truth, because they might be alien sighted collecting plants, animals, and minerals in the old days. Aliens visit us often, what? They are really interested in us or what? Look, the Earth is visited and monitored since well before the transfer of the first humanoid here when mammals, inferior races, and the primates were able to adapt to new conditions on Earth. Humanoids with intelligence and individuality were brought in to colonize the planet. This was possible only when the particular condition of the planet provided colonization of this type. There is no missing link that scientists seek because there was no link between apes and Homo sapiens. When the planet was at the right time of colonization, many ethnicities were automatically transferred by their vibrational frequencies for the regions of the planet that most resembled their habitat, the planets of origin. How do these aliens travel such vast distances for their research and operations so easily? Well, one thing I can tell you, not by using rocket technology, as on Earth. The transport ships are transferred from one point to another in the nebula, through tunnels, portals, in time. To explain this technology in a nutshell, imagine that you have a straw. From one point to another, it would be very far, and if I had to go through it, it would be thousands of light years away, in time. But, if we could bend the tube and touch the two ends, I could take a step back and be where I wanted, in a snap. This is an old technology that enables the transfer of material without having to go through millions of light years, away from dark matter to reach any point in space. In dark matter there is no relationship between time and space, so it is an item that can be eliminated as a common denominator. These portals were transferred by civilizations thousands of years ago, an advanced transportation technology for many specific points of the nebula, forming a network of communication and travel for the movement of intergalactic spaceships of all the planets in a great community. 
They are used for search and collection of key materials that are not found in their home planets and shipments of all operations and settlements. These portals are not in open space, like black holes or wormholes as the scientists now believe on Earth with its incomplete and inconsistent theories. The portals are actually a very old technology, in terms of time, at least a billion of Earth years old. A portal is physically transferred to a particular celestial body at exact coordinates and sent through a transfer system, which works with the integration of space, time, and relative position with great accuracy. Having been justifiably sent to the site and properly activated, the unit can be used. The installation of gates of transport is governed by a perfect administration of the community responsible for the galaxy or galaxies in question. In the case of your solar system, a portal is installed on the dark side of the moon the Earth satellite. It is an intergalactic gateway with high capacity and is the only one in this solar system. This site was chosen specifically because the moon always keeps a hidden side to observers on Earth, allowing free movement of spaceships. Of course with your new satellites that currently do exploratory survey of its surface. Your scientists have already confirmed the existence of several alien bases, old spaceships, old buildings, both on the dark side as the lighter side of the moon. After passing through the portal, the ship is allowed to continue to their destination to fulfill the mission conferred upon it by its administration. From there, the craft uses its own propulsion system that works by generating a plasmid beam of magnetic single polarity, interacting with magnetic forces inherent to the planet's gravitational tunnels to move at great speeds. An onboard computer handles with incredible speed the beams holding automatic navigation to a course through the mind control by the contact of the hands of the browser with the control panel or mentally. The energy for the generator is provided by a fuel element that we call anti-carbon. Developed in some dark areas of the galaxies, in production units on planets in its borders. The gravity generator works with directional beam cannons of magnetic unipolar fields, made from a metal that has zero resistance to electrons, that is, a superconductor at ambient temperature, allowing an extraordinary power. As it have zero resistance you can drive a great amount of electrical current throughout the magnets creating a huge magnetic field in each propulsion magnet. This metal exists in abundance in some planets, and on Earth, it originates from an asteroid weighing millions of tons that crashed long ago. When the planet did not enjoy the protection of the current atmosphere, but it only exists on the site of the crash that today is covered by an almost one kilometer thick layer of ice in Antarctic. Mythi. Is it true that NASA and Russia already have appropriated many of these spaceships? Why have they not copied the alien technology with re-engineering? Yes, Earth scientists have in their possession several ships that had accidents at different times that they try to copy and understand. These ships were hurt by the instability of the planet Earth. Explaining the planets of which these ships originate are fully climate controlled, are true havens in respect to harmony between the planet and its inhabitants. Everything happens at the right time and right amount. When they visit a planet that is in transition like the Earth, totally uncontrolled, with nature acting against aggression that will suffer systematically by unbridled greed for unchecked development of humanoids from here. Some pilots are caught by surprise. Magnetic storms, clouds with ice, lightning, and other factors led to several accidents. In any case, scientists have not copied because of the complete inability to do so. The control systems utilize a technology known only by its scientists. 
The controls, computers, and generators are manufactured with intelligent molecules, that is, they can feel orders and commands and are mentally programmed by their builders and designers. They don't have power buttons, nor wiring, nor sockets, or switches, impossible to copy or understand. The metallic molecules also have Intelligence are produced with a guideline, and if you fold a simple flat plate, it will return to its original state as if it had never been folded unless it is reprogrammed to take on a new design. If you drill, it self-regenerates. Technologies are far ahead, are beyond the reach of humanoids on Earth at this point.